Hi, this is Anna Carver, and I just wanted to explain where things are at and mention that I have a lot of ideas for blog posts, a lot of introductory information that I want to start with before tackling some of the new topics, um, adding some depth, clarifying some misunderstandings, but there are some huge holes or loops right now that aren't properly filled, and it's much faster for me to just do a quick video than to write up and edit and proofread a large post and I'm still working on blog style writing so I know that some of my posts can go overboard in detail I'm really working on trimming it down and making it more conversational so that you can get the information that's helpful for you without having to read a bunch of extra detail that's not helpful to you but in the same way I can structure it so that you can get what you need but you can also look at the references too and I can quickly pinpoint where the misunderstandings are or where to go for more information Right now, though, I want to talk about hyperthyroid symptoms, what that is, why I haven't discussed it so far, what that means as far as symptoms. First thing I want to say is that hyperthyroidism is high thyroid hormone levels. So this means that a TSH level would be suppressed or abnormally low because it doesn't need to signal to the thyroid gland to increase thyroid hormone production. There are many people who have autoimmune conditions, so the two I'd like to mention would be Graves' disease and Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And with Graves' disease, there are antibodies that attack the thyroid, but they mimic thyroid stimulating hormone. They bind to the same receptors, and this is, causes the thyroid hormone to get the signal to produce more thyroid hormone when it's not needed. So it overstimulates the gland, and it makes thyroid hormone levels in the blood much higher. Um, Hashimoto's can also cause brief periods of hyperthyroidism because a person goes through a period of destruction of the gland and sometimes when the tissue is destroyed, thyroid hormones can temporarily increase even though over time, usually the progression causes the thyroid gland to reduce production of thyroid hormones. So let's talk about symptoms. Thyroid hormone increases metabolism. So if a person has high or excess thyroid hormones, that's going to rev up their systems. And I want to talk about the cardiovascular effects first because those are the most critical. Um, as far as the cardiovascular system, an excess in thyroid hormone can increase blood pressure, body temperature, heart rate. It can cause nervousness, anxiety, sweating, difficulty sleeping, uh, it can stimulate appetite, but it can cause a person to lose weight. It can increase gastrointestinal mobility. Um, it can cause some changes with electrolyte levels too. But in general, the major problem is that it makes the body more sensitive to catecholamines. And catecholamines such as epinephrine and norepinephrine are stress hormones. That's where the real problem lies, is that a person who is hyperthyroid is very, very sensitive to these stress hormones, and it just takes a little bit for their heart to go absolutely crazy and for them to have a full-blown panic attack when there's no real danger. Now, the one thing that I want to talk about with hyperthyroidism is that sometimes a person is hypothyroid, low thyroid hormone for so long that their adrenal glands aren't functioning well. And if a person's adrenal glands, which produce the stress hormones cortisol and aldosterone, which help to increase glucose and also help us to uh, reabsorb sodium and reabsorb water to increase blood pressure, those hormones help us to deal with stress. And that stress might be psychological stress. It could just be hypoglycemia in between meals. But they're very helpful to help a person deal with stress. When a person has or goes through a long period of time being hypothyroid, their adrenal cortex is dysfunctional. It can't produce enough or the timing of hormone production may be off too. Um, that's another option. But if the adrenal cortex is affected and can't do its job of producing enough cortisol and aldosterone at the appropriate time, and sex hormones too, they're also produced in the cortex, then the only compensation that can happen is with epinephrine and norepinephrine. And those hormones can cause a panic attack, they can cause the nervousness, sweating, shaking, um, increase in heart rate, increase in blood pressure, all of those symptoms. But if it's an adrenal problem instead of initially a thyroid problem, then those symptoms are likely to increase and decrease throughout the day. 
based on a person's stress level and also their diet. If they drink these caffeinated beverages or sugar, those are some factors that can boost epinephrine. So if a person feels hyper and then hypo and then hyper and then hypo, um, they're experiencing these symptoms intermittently, it very well could be related to adrenal dysfunction and their inability to handle stress. As where when a person feels consistently overstimulated, then it's likely to be a true hyperthyroid situation. But sometimes the two are confusing, so it's important to find a really good doctor who can do the appropriate testing and separate out which might be appropriate or what might be the case in your particular instance. I will post again soon. Thank you. Bye.